ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் யுவர் ஃபேவரட் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல்ஸ் டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் தி செகண்ட் கொஸ்டின் விச் வில் கம் டு யூ ஆஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் யுவர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் பிகாஸ் இட் இஸ் வெரி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் யூ ஹாவ் ஆன்சர்ட் த வே தட் ஹேஸ் ட்ரிகர்ட் அனதர் கொஸ்டின் அண்ட் திஸ் இன் ஃபேக்ட் இஸ் அ கொஸ்டின் தட்ஸ் பீன் ஆஸ்க் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் யுவர் இன்டெப் நாலேஜ் on the performance engineering or performance testing so with no further ado let's go to the video and before that uh, this is me your son shamukum i welcome you all to our little slide youtube channel and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe it yet um uh, like the videos and share the video with your friends and uh, okay so now let's go to the video so the first question that's been asked previously is what will you do if you find the response time is high for a few transactions at the end of the load test and what will what will be your next step so this was the question that's been asked and we have seen the answer we have seen the detailed answer on this and as part of this answer uh, we have answered the very first part of it is like um, i am giving uh, like i gave uh, an insight about the transaction profiling so in this video uh, the interviewer is asking you the second question like can you take me through the step by step approach uh, on the transaction profiling which you told to find the bottleneck identification or the performance tuning and um, the the stuff that we have answered so this video is going to be uh, fully concentrated on the transaction profiling and i will take you through the steps on how to do the transaction profiling and i will also take you through an example of how to do this with neuralink okay so firstly um let me okay yeah so the first part of this uh, is going to be analyzing the performance test results and uh, yep so what are we going to do in the very first part which is the analyzing of performance test so we have to start by reviewing the performance test results which we have obtained from running the performance test against the application and that's what as part of your transaction profiling you are going to do because you are going to first obtain all the performance test results and then you are going to identify the transactions with high response times because they are the potential candidates for optimization and then we have to look for any outliers or anomalies in the data that can indicate any areas of concern so this is the very first part so first before you do any analysis you have to first collect all those response times so you have to identify all those transactions with high response times which we have to optimize right so now let's move on to the second part and this is going to be a little bigger because i'm going to take you through the example of how to do this with a neuralink so this part is actually using transaction profiling tools so we have a lot of profiling tools or transaction profiling tools because they offer detailed insights into the behavior of individual transactions within an application or any system and these tools so what do these these tools do so these tools actually capture metrics such as execution time the cpu and the memory usage they also look for database queries for any external api calls and much more and some of the examples of uh, the transaction profiling tools which include uh, neuralink app dynamics dynatrace and visual studio profiler so here is the point where you have to take control of the interview and so since you have given what a transaction profiling tool tool does and then what are the metrics uh, the transaction profiling tool do and then you have to come up with the example of the profiling tools and you have mentioned the neuralink so now you must start explaining this approach using the neuralink okay so neuralink automatically traces transactions as they flow through the application and they capture detailed information about each transaction's execution and the transaction tracing includes data such as response times the throughput the error rate and the database query performance and we can also customize the transaction traces to capture for any additional context and details such as custom attributes for any user sessions and for any specific transaction attributes so once we do the transaction tracing what is the next step so now we have all these metrics in our hands so let's start us by 
using the new relic dashboard to analyze the transaction data and to identify the transactions with high response times or performance issues. And after this, we have to drill down into individual transactions to view detailed performance metrics, which includes the breakdown by component, the database queries, the external calls, and the CPU memory usage. And also, the next part is we have to identify the slow performing transactions, the outliers, and the bottlenecks that may be impacting the overall application performance. So, so far we did the uh, transaction tracing and then we did the transaction analysis and then moving on to the error monitoring. So, New Relic provides comprehensive error monitoring capabilities which will allow us to track and analyze for any errors which occurs within the transactions. And uh, we have to monitor for error rates, error for any error types and error tracers to identify any recurring issues and prioritize bug fixes and optimizations. And again, the same part. So by using the error monitoring data, we have to correlate the errors with the specific transactions and we have to understand their impact on the overall application performance. So after doing all these uh, transaction tracing, the analysis, the monitoring, we have to do a dependency analysis because we all know New Relic offers this dependency maps and traces, which will help us to visualize the dependencies between different components and the services within our application architecture. So we can have a, a, a 360 degree of the dependencies between the components and the services. So this will help us to analyze for any dependencies to identify the performance bottlenecks, mainly the latency issues or for any areas of optimization. So by using this dependency analysis, we can understand the impact of the external services, the databases, the APIs, and the third-party integrations on transaction performance. So after doing the, all these parts, so we have to leverage the new link custom insights and alerting features to create custom dashboards, uh, to create reports and alerts for the specific performance uh, monitoring needs. So here, when we were discussing about the transaction tracing, uh, the interviewer might ask you or even in fact, you can give him more information on the transaction tracing because that's the most critical part which uh, has a high upper hand in explaining or even in fact for you as a performance tester, it can help you to understand the uh, to get the detailed insights into the execution path and the performance of individual transactions. So let me take you through that uh, uh, transaction tracing because New Relic agents automatically instrument the application code to trace transactions as they flow through the system. Again, this is something similar what we have in App Dynamics and Trace. But still, since I will approach this in the point in the viewpoint of the New Relic, okay. Because this instrumentation involves adding monitoring hooks or we can create code snippets to key points in the application such as uh, entry points or any methods or even functions to capture the transaction data. So the next part is the uh, the transaction identification because the transaction identification is, is very important we all know because that is where we can correlate the uh, high response times, right. So when a request or a transaction enters your application, the new relic agent identifies it as a transaction and assigns it a unique transaction ID. So the transaction ID will allow the new relic to track the entire life cycle of the transaction as it traverses through different components and services within the application. So after doing this uh, transaction identification and the traversing, the data collection step comes in. So as the tra transaction progress through the application, the new relic agent collects detailed performance data at each stage of the transaction lifecycle. So the data collected includes the metrics such as response times, the throughput, the CPU, the memory usage, the database queries, uh, external calls, and for any error rate. So New Relic actually also captures the contextual information such as transaction attributes uh, for any HTTP parameters, for user sessions, and custom attributes, which enriches the transaction trace data. So after collecting all those data, what are we going to do? So we have to uh, do the spanning. So what, what is spanning? So the transaction tracing in New Relic spans across distributed components and services within your application architecture. So when a transaction invokes downstream services or make any external calls, 
Neuralink traces these interactions and aggregates the data into a single trace. And this allows you to visualize the entire execution path of a transaction, which includes its interaction with internal and external dependencies. Okay. So after this, we have two more parts to discuss, which is sampling and aggregation. So Neuralink employs sampling techniques to collect the transaction traces efficiently while minimizing the overhead. So this sampling actually helps to manage resource utilization and uh, even it can ensure that the transaction tracing remains scalable. So that's about the scaling and then finally the visualization and the analysis. So once the transaction traces, the, the main part which we are pitching in, the, so the transaction traces. So once these are collected, they are visualized in Neuralink dashboard, which will provide a detailed view of the transaction performance because uh, these transaction traces will display the entire execution path of a transaction, including the timestamps, the method calls, the database queries, the external calls, and any errors encountered. And even we can also analyze the transaction traces to identify performance bottlenecks for any latency issues and areas for optimization within our application. So, yeah, the, uh, the transaction tracing in Neuralink enables us to gain deep visibility into the performance of individual transactions within the application. So, by understanding uh, this execution path, you can very well answer your question. Okay, so let's now move back to the uh, third part, which is the gathering detailed information. So I think we have already discussed this uh, gathering uh, the detailed information and uh, even the uh, grouping of transactions. So uh, just a second. So let me, I, I can actually take you uh, to, to the third topic, which is um, the gathering uh, data information. So once we have identified all these transactions with high uh, response times using the profiling tool, to gather the detailed information about these transactions. So, so far we have used Neuralink and using that we have gathered the detailed information. So, by analyzing the execution time of each transaction, including the time spent in different stages such as processing, database queries and external calls. And in fact, when we do this transaction tracing, as I told you, we, we can even identify how much time does it take in each component, right? So, that's very important because it can be quicker in one component it can be quicker uh, very slower in other components so that will actually help us to in fact tune in the required part which actually needs the tuning right so the monitoring resource consumption metrics such as the cpu the memory and the disk i/o to identify for any resource bottlenecks and finally the grouping of transactions so that's where we started and that's where we are going to end this analysis so the grouping transactions here it is based on common characteristics to better understand the underlying patterns which are contributing to the performance issues. Again, we can do this through the Neuralink, which I have told you earlier. And transactions can be grouped based on the functionality that is like login or checkout or user interactions such as any page views or any form submissions or any other system reference, for example, through database access or through external API calls. So by grouping all these transactions, we can identify the trends and patterns which can help us to prioritize optimization efforts. So by following these steps, we can systematically analyze the performance test results and we can identify the performance bottlenecks and take for any targeted actions to improve the overall performance of the application or the system. So with that, I think I have come to an end and uh, this is going to be the second question from the interviewer when you answer your first question. So he will ask you for the second question. And in fact, if you really want to understand more about Neuralink, please do comment in the comment section. I can create a new episode of videos on that, uh, on Neuralink. And in fact, I'm planning one on App Dynamics as well. So with no further delay, um, let me close the video and we will meet in our next video. Until then, it's bye-bye from Vasan Shanmugam and your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel.